Okay chaps and chapesses, so we have got our head on now and now comes the bit of doing the timing. Now I'm not going to profess to know how to actually set this up. I am going to say that I'm following Pazzy's videos from YouTube and um, if you've not seen them, get on that and check that out. What I have to do at this point according to what he reckons is to set the crank so that it is exactly at top dead centre, precisely he says. So. We shall do that. I'll make that bang on and then pop the exhaust sprocket in place. Now I've just got to dig out my uh, bits and bobs of bolts here for that. So I want the timing marks roughly straight up and down if I can do. And we'll get this chain around the bad boy. And he reckons that you want the bolt holes roughly in the middle. So I say that that's probably a tooth out. It's the wrong way now. That looks pretty good. So I think we put our bolts in now loosely. Okay, so at that point it pops in new tensioner. So once we get the tensioner in, we're going to drop in this sort of middle guide here. Uh, this is a weird one. This has got a really, really long bolt and a really short bolt. The long bolt goes in the back here, and the short bolt's going to come on this side. I'm going to sort of push it towards the exhaust side of the car. I think at this point I'll put the two in for the head. Now this one I've got to decide which is which. I believe we're going longer side on the right, shorter side on the left. That looks nice. Not going with any crazy torque. They're tiny little bolts, so I don't want to put too much force on them. And then we'll put the cap and the cover on here again. I noticed actually if you look at this that there's a little dimple which lines up with the cam. And then also on this part here, Looking at the wear indication on here, there's the same dimple here, so I'm going to keep this in exactly the same orientation. Um, we'll stick our studs back in there, the top chain tensioner, and we've got a brand new one of these as well. He just slots straight down into the holes like so. And like most of these little M6 threaded bolts, these are 10 newton meter torque. And then the next bit he tells us to go ahead and do is to put the new chain in. So here we have the two sprockets. I don't know if it's necessary, but I've given them a quick clean off and I've popped a little bit of assembly lube on there. From what I gather, I'm essentially just lining up the chains with the holes. So, pop the chains on like so. And what I need to do is to make sure that the bolt holes line up with the full amount of travel, which they do <laughs> first time. That's pretty sweet. So at full extremities, I've got the full motion of the Vanos there. You can see the bolt hole at the end of the right hand side on the left here. There's a point where the dial indicator comes in to check that this cam is uh, somewhere in the right position. Now, I've been having a lot of trouble with this so far, so what I need to do is I need to work out how to assess really when this cam starts to open. So I've got, what I've got here is a metal plate on the back of the engine stand. I've got the dial indicator set up so that I can move the height of it up and down and I can adjust it in and out. What I now want to do is touch it on the top of the bucket of the lifter and tighten it up and then zero the gauge. Okay, so I think that's my zero there. Now I'm going to turn it until it's just opening up. So I see eyeballing that, that doesn't look right to me. Because what I really want to see is I want to see the, the back of the cam lobe at its dead spot. So I need to turn it all the way until the needle stops turning, which is there. Zero him again, and then turn it until we get point 0.1 left, there we are. Now I'd say that looks far better. So getting back into there, the cam lobe is just beginning to touch the lifter cup. If we look at the cam lobes at the front, they're pointing upwards and towards one another. Now I'd also read that this was going to be clocked by 62 degrees. So if we think about it, if this is 0 degrees here, we have our dots facing upwards on the intake cam, it's a standard cam timing. This here would equate to a total turn of about is that 60 degrees? I wouldn't say that's quite that far. Any further though, our lobes are going to be totally far out. So I think we're pretty much there on that. What I would like to do is I'd like to set it like this and turn the engine over and see if it returns back to top dead centre the way I'm expecting it to. We've got the lobes pointing towards one another. Everything is in the right orientation. I've got lift of 0.1 mil in the lifter bucket on number six cylinder. Cylinder is definitely in top dead centre there and there. I'm fairly happy that's right, but I will put it together now and I'll rotate the engine a couple of times and double check everything before we accept that that's us. 
Okay, so from here I want to put on the, the spring plate and the two spacers. Now these again are quite obvious. I've got the you can see the wear pattern on the back of them and from the spring plate itself. The spring plate has to go with the dome facing towards me, something like that. And then again we can see where it's been riding on the spring plate on the inside we've got the wear line and the outside we've got the bolt holes. So I'm expecting that to go over the dowel pins eventually. So let's grab my nuts. And as that's going in, that's compressing that um spring plate down. And then I want to put the plate in the exhaust one. Again, he's pretty obvious which way around he's going. But I don't want to tighten this sprocket yet. I just want to get the bolts in place. Because when I put the vanos on, I've got to be able to rotate that. It would probably be wise at this point to put my gasket back on. My chain is fully rotated clockwise. And I'm watching enough vanos videos here to make sure that we get this on right. I've got to locate them on the pins. get the teeth engaged and hold the pressure on and hopefully the minute I start to turn the chain the van also be pulled in if it doesn't which that's not I'll go back and we'll start again so we'll give that a little turn straight away. Lovely. There we go. We mustn't forget we need the engine hiker. The hiker. I should put them in loosely for now. I need to put the water pump in first before we put that on. Okay so the next thing to do for me was just to put the by the way sorry about the phone footage. Sorry about the phone footage. Run out of memory card space. The next thing to do is to put on the thermostat housing and the water pump for me. Uh, the engine lifting bracket, I need to put the Vanos solenoid on the back. All the nuts are on Vanos and I've got to tighten up the sprocket for the exhaust cam. It's crucial, I've noticed, to hold that exhaust cam because at this point it's still essentially a free moving exhaust cam. I made sure it was back on the, the point where I wanted it to be, point one of a mill open. I've tightened up the sprocket. I believe now I just take the, uh, the spring out of the chain and allows it to come up and I believe apart from the two plugs that's the vanos and the timing done I'm just going to turn over a couple of times and check things so we have the timing gear attached and I have rotated the engine route through two turns there's no valve to piston contact timing marks as far as you can get them are still lining up I have my dial indicator still on the cam there and everything is everything looks hunky-dory she's now set pretty much at top dead center I believe yeah, there she is. And as you can see, rear cam pretty much bang on level there. Can't really make that out from that angle. It's a funny screw-off angle. Exhaust cam sitting on the piss, man. That's what we want to see. Really, I am kind of getting to the point now where today I've got to just put a few ancillaries on. And I'd like really to start thinking about building up all the little bits and bobs. So we've got the water pump on, got the thermostat housing with a new thermostat in it. I've gone for the 88 degree thermostat, the cooler one. I'm going to whack in the crank sensor, the cam sensor, the rear water pipe, the connections for the side of the head, the temp sensor and the other associated gubbins. And then round this side I've still got some exhaust studs to play around with. There's not actually that much round here so I'm not going to be putting back on the aircon pump. I'm going to leave that off right now. Let's uh, start plugging a few things in. Ah, oh, Vanos solenoid. There we go. We'll come back to it once we've got them in. Okay, so we get towards the end of this uh, sort of sequence by putting on all the parts that I just described a few moments ago, all the ancillary parts. The only thing I really had a problem with was the M52 water pipe. Brackets up and connects up to the M50 block, no problem at the top. But at the bottom, you'll see me point out there's a stud and there's a couple of bits of webbing that it should bolt onto on the M52 block that aren't there on the M51. Quite easily solved by cutting off a little bit of a power steering bracket from the M54 power steering pump. Nice strong bit of metal, couple of bolts, and she's located and nice and solid. So, next step of this process is really to take this long block and insert her back in my BMW. So stay with us guys, we've got some more videos coming up to get to that point. Hopefully things start to get a little bit more exciting and we'll get closer and closer to turning the key. Thanks for watching as always, that's it for now, Paymo out.